Welcome to The Real News Network in Baltimore. I'm Kim Brown. Last week, Congresswoman Talisi Gabbard introduced a bill in the House known as the Stop Arming Terrorists Act. It's aimed at stopping the United States from providing arms and support to terrorist groups or to nations who support these groups. Mr. Speaker, under U.S. law, it is illegal for you or me or any American to provide any type of assistance to al-Qaeda, ISIS, or other terrorist groups. If we broke this law, we'd be thrown in jail. Yet the U.S. government's been violating this law for years, directly and indirectly supporting allies and partners of groups like al-Qaeda and ISIS, with money, weapons, intelligence, and other support in their fight to overthrow the Syrian government. A recent New York Times... Well, joining us to discuss this is Glenn Ford. Glenn is the co-founder and the executive editor of the Black Agenda Report. He's also author of The Big Lie, an analysis of U.S. media coverage of the Grenada invasion. He's joining us today from Plainfield, New Jersey. Glenn, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, Glenn, uh, Congresswoman Gabbard's bill, as we just heard her presented to the House floor, it already has some bipartisan support. Uh, one of her, you know, a couple of her co-sponsors include uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, also Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, and the Progressive Democrats of America have come out and uh, expressed their support for this bill. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, it's it, just as the title says, it's rather straightforward, Stop Arming Terrorists Act. Uh, it seems simple, but the problem is that the Obama administration has been arming these terrorists in Syria for the past five years. It armed them in, in Libya. And it is as a result of these massive amounts of arms that have come in, not just from the Obama administration, but from its allies in the Mideast, uh, the Arab autocracies, uh, uh, and from most of the members of NATO. It's because of this cauldron of weaponry that's been poured into uh, Syria that we saw uh, the creation, the rise of ISIS, and the huge growth uh, in al-Qaeda through its affiliate in Syria, uh, the al-Nusra uh, Front. Uh, so what uh, Congresswoman Gabbard's bill tries to do is put another piece of legislation in there that says, uh, that bolsters previous uh, laws which make it a crime to give any kind of substantive uh, help to uh, al-Qaeda or its different uh, iterations uh, to put some more specific laws uh, on the books that would require that the U.S. Director of Intelligence, and that's the guy who oversees all the uh, U.S. intelligence agencies, uh, to make a list of these groups, who, who exactly they are, and update that list, and also to make a list of all the nations that are giving any kind of aid to these groups. And that includes the United States, but also the U.S.'s allies. Aid meaning any type of assistance, whether it's humanitarian or money or medical or in the form uh, of weapons. So it tries to put another level of law on top of the laws that already exist, which are being flaunted by this administration uh, into play, uh, and to get some kind of list of who these groups are. And that's real important, uh, because the United States, uh, in its sham of negotiations uh, with Russia, uh, which was supposed to lead to just this kind of list, who are the groups that the United States says it supports, groups that the U.S. claims uh, are not affiliated or associated or collaborating uh, with ISIS uh, or with al-Qaeda. Who are they? Where are they? And what kind of assistance are you giving to them? Uh, to bring this all out uh, into uh, the open, uh, to, to, to see if uh, these groups and the United States and its allies actually do have a relationship. So it would provide the legal basis so that people could hold uh, hearings. Uh, and that different branches of the U.S. government would have an actual uh, obligation uh, to uh, find out what the United States is doing with its covert and overt arms uh, to deal with jihadist Islamic terrorism. 
Well, Glenda, I mean, you raised several interesting points. I mean, first of all, the United States government certainly adheres to the practice of no permanent enemies, no permanent friends, just permanent interests. And the nation constantly has shifting interests. So how would an act like this work um, if it were transported back to, say, 35, 40 years? Because I'm thinking, obviously, of how the United States government was responsible for funding the Mujahideen uh, in Afghanistan to fight against Russia and the Mujahideen at the time was headed by Osama bin Laden, who went on to create Al Qaeda, and Al Qaeda became uh, a terrorist organization that that we engaged in a war against, and I guess to some extent still engaging in in war uh, behavior with them. So how does that work exactly? Because I mean we have a tendency to back terrorist groups or individuals, and they somehow turn against us. For reasons well, you, you know, don't that, know. <laughs> that is what war, laws are for, uh, so that superpowers, which have interests all the time everywhere, uh, that shift all of the time, so that superpowers can't just do whatever they want to do in any given situation, that they are ruled by law. There's international law, and then there's, of course, their own country's laws. And the United States has broken international law. It was breaking international law when it and Saudi Arabia set up something that was previously non-existent in human history, and that is an international jihadist network in Afghanistan for the purpose of making war against the recognized government uh, in Afghanistan. That's a, that's a violation of international law, but the United States really doesn't pay much attention to international law, uh, and there should have been uh, a law on the books in the United States as well. Uh, there are laws on the books in the United States regarding uh, how the United States is supposed to, and all of its citizens, uh, is supposed to comport itself with regard to al-Qaeda uh, and any of its derivatives. And ISIS is, of course, a derivative of al-Qaeda. And there's a proliferation of groups that are derivatives of al-Qaeda or, or collaborate on a daily military basis with al-Qaeda. That's already against the law, as Congresswoman Gabbard has pointed out. But apparently you need several layers of law before you can get uh, the attention uh, of uh, a U.S. administration which thinks, as you just uh, talked about, that the United States has interests that supersede the law. So you mentioned the different terrorist organizations that the U.S. has uh, supported directly and, and indirectly, but how does this apply to states? Um, uh, specifically, I'm thinking about Saudi Arabia, of which uh, we do provide some state support, although Saudi Arabia is a very wealthy country. They don't seem to need foreign aid from the United States, but, you know, that's another conversation. But uh, this is one of our allies, one of our strategic partners in the Middle East who have been tied uh, to numerous terrorist attacks. Even the 9-11 report went on to strongly suggest that Saudi Arabia had a role to play in the attacks on uh, the, the, the World Trade Center in 2001. So. I mean, how would uh, Congresswoman Gabbard's bill be able to circumvent, if at all, um, some of the strategic partnerships that we have with our allies? The intent of the law would make it so that the United States could not, for example, have so sold uh, some $30 billion plus of weapons to Saudi Arabia. It, it would also, and this would really hurt the uh, political uh, feelings of lots of folks, uh, it would also prohibit the intent of the law, at least, uh, dealing or uh, having uh, 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 giving aid to Israel, the greatest recipient of U.S. aid on the planet, because Israel uh, openly uh, admits to treating the soldiers of ISIS uh, who are wounded on the battlefield in Syria in Israeli hospitals, and that certainly is giving some kind of uh, substantive aid uh, to Al Qaeda. Uh, so, yeah, this would throw a monkey wrench into all kinds of aspects of current U.S. policy of using jihadist Islamist terrorists as foot soldiers in U.S. wars. It's designed to do that. 
The Stop Arming Terrorists Act, it has uh, been presented to the United States House of Representatives um, by Democratic Hawaiian uh, Congresswoman Talisi Gabbard. So we will see how this bill uh, makes its way through the Congress and uh, to see what kind of support or lack of support that it gets. We've been speaking with Glenn Ford. Glenn is the co-founder and executive editor of the Black Agenda Report. Glenn, we appreciate your analysis today as always. Thank you. Thanks for watching The Real News Network.